as far as the skin tone here is maybe more of a regular skin tone, but then getting into some turquoise and some blues and other such things. Sandy color here, some kind of rock color there. I'm just going to get down into this. Now, I just have my palette. Uh, there's a bunch of colors on here from the last video that I just finished filming. Yeah, it's kind of been a backwards sort of day, but we're just going to get in here and start applying some indigo. Then we're going to maybe get into some... Uh, maybe a little bit of Van Dyke Brown, a little bit of the Esfoltum too, perhaps. Just a touch of that Esfoltum, especially over here where we got the uh, the treasure chest. Uh, so, yeah, we're just going to do what we can here. Now, I am, I am going to wipe some of this away first, though, because I want to try and get some of the brighter colors in here. And, and after the pre-glaze, well, this stuff right here, I don't want to to uh, dim down some of the brighter colors that are about to come on to here. All right, this again, that's just the indigo over there. We'll try and get some phthalo green on the skin. We'll try and get some, maybe some of the Egyptian violet too, if we can. Should be okay. All right, here, why don't we... I'm thinking, do I do the Terra Rosa now? Do we wait? We'll wait on the Terra Rosa. I'm going to use this. No, I might use something. Oh, I'll use this over here. Why don't we... Uh, oh, what the heck. Let's do the turquoise here. Because of uh, reasons. Right? Because of reasons. So thanks, the, thanks for sending the message there. Because I just... Uh, I was like, why the heck is, uh, it was weird. It was very weird. All right, what, what is the blue going to, is the blue going to go up this way? Or is the, oh, no, no, no. I think the violet may be down here. Maybe the blue comes up this way, and we try and combo that into the skin tone. No, maybe I'll let the violet get up there. So that means we need to actually let some of the blue work its way up there. Okay, well, we'll get this figured out. Like I said, haven't really done much with in the way of uh, mermaids, so uh, we're all going to learn together here. So, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of purple from this thing. Uh, I just I was like, wait a minute. I haven't put the purple on here yet, but there was lots of purple on here. The idea was not just multiple light sources, but also two different temperatures of purple. One's more magenta, one is more of a, well, purple. Yeah, uh, Vic. Uh, obviously, there's uh, there's been some some friends of ours that this has really been great for them because they can they can finally see the streams at. Gosh, would you just say more of a like a regular time, right? Instead of having to be, well, awake at two o'clock in the morning now, two fifty seven here. So. Basically, my goal here is to, you know, I'm going to be streaming probably till about 7 or 7.30 my time because I need to help Kathy with her stuff at around that time. Uh, unless unless I get some messages in the chat and then, then we might have to uh, might have to head out sooner than that. So this is going to be literally an overnighter here. So th thanks for folks for joining me in the overnight hours. Now that... Okay, there's our turquoise and blue. Let's see if I can do the violet up here. And we don't need a whole bunch of it because, well, Egyptian violet, right? So I'm just going to grab this thing. Egyptian violet. Oh, and we did find out. Okay, oh, wait a minute. Let me grab this. So I was using the Green Stuff World, you know, the homemade fluorescent mix, right? But... That obviously has no staining power, so I had to combo that with the Egyptian violet to, to get any sort of a staining power to it. So we'll do the, I guess, the same here. And if it doesn't work out, doesn't work out, we can change it. I don't know, mistakes with the oils, there's just uh, makeup sponges. Or you, or, you, or you 3D print it again. But uh, makeup sponge is probably the way to go. Probably the way to go. And uh, again, this is from Loot Studios. You couldn't tell you which release this was. If I had to guess, I would say something like March or April. Maybe March. Maybe March. 
Uh, you know, that's, uh, that's working out okay. Actually, I'm kind of glad I did that selection there. Oh, that was probably too much thinner, so uh, no big deal. No biggie. We'll get back here with some more of our Egyptian violet. Let that work its way up on the skin. Maybe uh, also get some of the green and turquoise in there. That's going to be more of a gold, I would say. Yeah, I haven't figured out what we want to necessarily do uh, on the hair, per se, but we'll figure out something. We'll figure out something here. Uh, yeah, Vic, that was something that I wanted to do. Now, of course, I would have loved to use the... Uh, who knows, maybe we'll still use them. We we might. It just it doesn't always show up so well on camera, but the the interference colors, who knows? I, maybe I'll throw them on there. Of course, again, I could always print this out again, true, and, and hit uh, try it with the interference colors. Hmm, what do we want to do? You know what? I will grab a little bit of that asphaltum. And let's just do this here. Uh, let's see. Oh, <laughs> yeah, boy, Nixel, uh, well, you would know better than me exactly when there was a point, and I'm not thinking 10 years ago or even, it wasn't all that long ago that the Canadian and U.S. dollars were darn near paired up, right? I mean, it, it's never been exactly the same, but I could swear four and a half, five, six years ago, weren't they darn near equal? Hey, Bithron. Uh, yeah, Nixel, and of course, uh, you know, one of the weird side lights of what's been going on here is that we kind of get to see in some other ways how things are all haywire. So, yeah, it's, uh, uh <laughs> won't, won't uh, get disagreement here on that, right, Nixel? Won't get any nick the disagreement there. Uh -uh. So, Bithron, uh, uh, the tanks have been looking great. And, of course, uh, vehicle recognition flags are, are always a good thing. I like them. I always liked those. All right, now let's... What do we, I don't want to do Little Mermaid here. We ain't doing that. We are not doing Little Mermaid here. So I'm going to try to uh, get more into the uh, gold-ish type here. Maybe, uh, maybe there'll be some differences here. We'll probably do a little bit of a change on the hair, for sure. We might even do something a little bit different for the tiara crown, wherever that is. Uh, let me see. So, yeah, there's definitely a lot of crazy temperature stuff going on. And uh, so, Drax, uh, now, it, it's not, uh, you don't also have the, the wildfire thing going on, do you? So yeah, we were just uh, we were talking with some of our Canadian friends about how the the dollar and the Canadian dollar had uh, been darn near equal, if not a little bit in favor of the Canadian side, and that's uh, that's changed a little bit. Here, let's darken this up just a bit more. Then we got to leave that in place. Leave it in place. Then I'm going to look around and see if there's other areas that I have not done the paint rule. So we have done that here. We've done that here. Now let's let's grab some of our filbert brushes here and start bringing in some lighter colors. Really yellow pale. Now the idea is here all of this paint is still wet. All that paint is still wet there. So whatever I do on top of that is going to mix. So in, instead of a zenithal prime, think of this as more like an active zenithal. And uh, basically it was just primer like this uh, a few minutes ago. Just a few minutes ago. Hey, wait, White Squirrel. Uh, white Squirrel, it's the color itself. There's only about, oh mm, gosh, maybe a dozen staining colors or so. And that's what's on here. Indigo, even Terra Rosa, Van Dyke Brown, Thalo Green, Egyptian Violet. A little Perlene Black down here. And then Indian Yellow, those are staining colors as we call them. Other colors are are not, so it doesn't matter. The thinner doesn't matter, uh, because with oils you can you can thin the paint. You cannot dilute it, and that was actually something we were doing here. The lightest lights on here 
were actually a pin line wash. Seriously, they're almost 95% thinner. So if it's an opaque color, it's going to just, if it's staining, it's staining, which is really cool. Ah, oh, hey, Neshland. So Neshland, uh, is this the March release or is this the April release? Uh, I just, I couldn't remember. I have a feeling it might have been the March release. I could be wrong. But here, you see that darker color that's getting on the brush? That is a sign that we have wet paint on here and that it is mixing. And we can still come back in there with some turquoise and other stuff like here, right? Where you've got that. I think even on the hands I might try to get a little bit of the turquoise in there. Here, let's get this on the face. And a little bit more over here. And you can see, look at, see that darker color on the end of the brush there? It's all mixing together. That is what's so much fun about the oils. You get all this free, literally free mixing, free blending stuff that you don't have to do. Now I'll grab another one of these and let's start to hit some of the, either the sand or the rocks. And I'll grab this, some of my violet here. Oh, hey, Bina, how you doing? And uh, Gogarin, nice to see you too. Uh, Nixel, I don't have a Discord. There is a, oh gosh, a Grim setup. I think it's called the Miniature Painting Guild or something like that. At their artist, Miniature Artist Guild. I think it's called the uh, Miniature Painting Guild, maybe. I'm not sure. Uh, I don't get to do much there. There is one channel in there that's called Wappleville. When I can, I try to post things there. All right, so there's our, right, just a little bit. Look at all that dark color that's gotten on there. Oh, thanks, uh, thanks, Bithron. Uh, Bina, I just started 20 minutes ago. Yeah, about 20 minutes ago, don't don't you think? Yeah, somewhere about 20 minutes ago. Now, uh, it's been another one of those kind of days here. So uh, pretty much everything went haywire today. So that's uh, that's why we have a weird start time. Now again, this is the video. Actually, I was filming this tonight because I didn't get to film Sunday night because Sunday night was crazy. Uh, this actual here's our Sauron. This was uh, the old classic one, about 20 years old-ish on this figure, thereabouts. So thanks, Bithron. Appreciate that. And of course, again, here is that Lethal Shadows gaming miniature. And again, you can see how this starts to take take form just like this did. Initially, the skin was completely dark, just like, like this. It was almost that color right there, and then you can see how it was lightened up. The snakes, the snake hair was turned into more of a greenish color, and then, of course, all of the object source lighting that was brought in there, too. Now, down here, I'm trying to get something that's got a little bit more of a tan-ish color to it. But you can see we're, we're doing that same sort of dry brushy thing. Oils, less is more, and more is way too much. And by way too much, I mean it's too much. You need less paint. Uh, also, too, everybody please give Drax the fella, because Drax also works with the oil paints. And uh, oh, also, too, free range, uh, if you wanted to post any pictures of what you've been working on, you know, I know you just finished your stream. You don't have pictures right now, but I know you got some work in progress as well. Speaking of Discord, you know, if you've got a Discord or Insta or anything like that, you want to share in the chat. Look at that. See all that Indian yellow? This is a staining color right here. Indian yellow, most definitely. Because you can see I'm wiping this away, and yet you still see paint there, right? Ah, uh, Abzan, nice to see you. Oh, I'm glad that uh, you've been able to get into the oils, and I hope that they've been very fun and relaxing. And of course, as always, as I always, always remind folks, simple colors may be on your, your first one, right? Not too many colors, and something with larger surfaces like this. Open surfaces, so you can uh, fool around with some of the blending there and such. Uh, let's see. Uh, well, Nixo, uh, Megan's been working really hard on, <laughs> we always call them Fry Slayer Dwarves here, but Fire Slayer Dwarves. She's been working really hard on those. I think she just finished one of the big guys, and then she just finished a couple of units of infantry. 
I don't I don't know does she have the I don't think she even has the oil paints right now I think Queez does I don't know if she does I'm not quite sure but I, th I think she doesn't want to mess with those until she finishes off that big dwarf project Oh, hey, Nosferatu. Uh, let's see. Uh, well, actually, uh, Lethal Shadows, I haven't been outside. So, uh, yeah, I'd have to... Uh, let's see. Oh, I haven't been keeping up on photos. Uh, so, Lethal Shadows, I... Today was basically, I didn't, yeah, I haven't been able to look at out, uh, no, I actually did walk to the store. So, no, there was no, as of about 4 o'clock this afternoon or 5 or something like that, there was no package outside today. So, well, maybe that's tomorrow, maybe that's, well, today, today. Now, uh, Abzan, we actually tried it a few times, and it does seem to work as a staining color. So here is that naphthol. This is in one of the videos right here. And we actually used it again here. And then, of course, uh, you can see it here. Oh, gosh, where did she? Here she is. Um, so Abzan, you can see, uh, check out this one. This is actually on the YouTube channel right here. I used the naphthol red on that one. And thank you so much, Spider Revenant, for that follow. Hello, little hobbits. I spark my ganja. Um, I know that uh, when Valerian fell into the sea, did the elves just turn into mermaids? She's like, oh, so I'm an elf now, huh? Thank you so much for that follow. I appreciate that. Oh, okay, thanks, Le thanks Lethal Shadows. Ah, uh, well... Well, around, of course, around here, you don't want any special guests uh, helping themselves to your uh, to your stuff, do you? <laughs> yeah, don't want that, do we? All right, now, this is going to be, in some ways, a little bit like what we did with this Kieran here. We're going to try and get into some of the radiant colors now. I'm thinking radiant green might just do, ooh, with a little bit of the, yeah, a little bit of our thalo green. Oh, my goodness, that's going to be... Pretty intense there. Now, let me uh, just get some of that paint off of that brush. Again, dry brush. We want that as dry as we can make it. There we are. And this should start to really uh, change things here as soon as we start getting in some of these lighter colors now. And there's that phthalo green. Little bit of the radiant green in there, too. Uh, so Nosferatu, um, I'm guessing that the uh, the MDF terrain kind of soaked up a little bit of the a uh, little bit of the preglaze, probably. I could see that. Now, see how there's some of the purple left underneath there. Well, we'll still go lighter than that, but I want to use some of the radiant turquoise. Now, let's get that down uh, here, maybe. Hey, Arta Bianca, how are you doing? Now, so Arta Bianca, well, actually, Saruman was probably dry at about six hours or so. And this thing, we painted this on Saturday, and that is most definitely dry. Oh, that's uh, completely dry right there. Arta Bianca, you're using so little paint that it's, uh, it's a whole different ball of wax. And of course, uh, well, here's some of our 2D art, right? So uh, here, let's, uh, whoa. So this uh, was pretty much dry by the next day as well, right? Because again, not using a lot of paint. And we also want to say thank you so much, AD Creations, for the raid. Thank you so much. Uh, so AD, I hope that things are going a little bit better with the hubby there. And everybody, please give uh, AD Creations a follow. But AD, if, uh, if you wanted to, once you kind of get settled in here, if you wanted to drop his channel for some follows, if you wanted to do that, uh, I know that uh, we were trying to get him some the other day. Well, on Saturday, I think. So if you wanted to do that, that would be great. So thanks, everybody, for the, the raids. I really appreciate that. I, I know this is a bizarro time. 
Now, of course, once upon a time, this is when I actually used to begin streaming uh, on YouTube. I used to actually start at 2.30 in the morning my time. Uh, t today is just, on many levels, a very crazy situation. So uh, well, we're kind of doing some different things here. Uh, let's see. So, uh, th yeah, the the MDF definitely is a uh, it's pretty darn absorbent, isn't it, Nos Nosferatu? And here, let's get a little bit more of that radiant green in there. We can still again do more. I'm going to try and get some of my Egyptian uh, violet with some of the radiant violet in there. I think we can do that too. Where's it? Ah, good. Speaking of radiant violet, there it is, and I might even mix it with the uh, fluorescent purple. Um, it's kicking in a little bit. Uh, well, AD, uh, I, I hope that again you can kind of get a little, uh, a little bit of relaxing there. And again, uh, you always want to pop the your your info in there and his, so that we can try and spread the spread the love and everything. That that's cool. Uh, uh, Mtelly's also stream. Oh, gee, sorry, Mtelly's. Uh, so, folks, please give Mtelly's a follow as well, because Mtelly's also does the streaming of the Metazoos. Hey, Mikey, nice to see you too. There we go. So, yeah, uh, Vic, the when it comes to the the, well, it's just. Less is more, and more is way too much, and we're talking about way, way less, aren't we? Now I'm gonna actually get into the uh, quick drive right over here. Might even bring that over here to the uh, Terra Rosa. See what happens. Uh, let's see. Yeah, Absent. It, it really is amazing, isn't it? It really is, and. Uh, you, you get some brilliant yellow pale into it or whatever. It's just unbelievable what uh, what results from that, right? All right, Mikey. Well, I'm gonna be. It's it's only 3:22. I've got at least four hours more streaming to go here, so we we might just be here when when you get back because we're we're only. Oh, by the way, this is a half an hour in. Yeah, now Nosferatu, even the uh, even the Williamsburg Van Dyke Brown, it needs to stay on there at least five minutes, ten minutes, something like that, before you wipe it off, before you're really going to get any kind of uh, staining into it. So it's just one of those things you'll just have to kind of leave it on there for a while, just to be able to get that staining. Now, I will say this particular Loot Studios figure, boy, that the supports were kind of bonkers on this one. <laughs> that I will say. All right, here's some of the brilliant yellow pale. You know what? I might even let a little bit of the uh, green get in there. Oops, that might be too much. And again, basically a drop. You know what? I might see if I can zoom in for you just a bit more here, at least uh, when we're going to work on some of these type of areas here. Uh, well, Bina, you'll uh, you'll have to let me know how the ga uh, the Gamlin stuff works. Uh, Dano seems to think it's fine. He's used that, and he was pleased with the results. And, oh, and Bina, if you could, uh, well, you know, post the uh, the links there for the the folks in well, at least in Germany and the EU in general, where uh, maybe there's a source for them to get the Gamlin colors. That would be fantastic if you don't mind. Yeah, Abzan, uh, the the Egyptian violet and the I mean, talk about two super staining colors, right? That's actually why I did those. I, I don't know if you saw the one video that I did, where we we basically were making our own staining colors and took the Indian yellow, mixed it with the phthalo green, and then took the Egyptian violet, mixed that with the Indian yellow. I think well, we even took Indian yellow, mixed it with uh, perlene black. That's right. Yeah, we did that too. All right. More with the here, here. 
And I think we'll probably put some more stuff in there. I think that might go more to like a jade sort of a look, I think. But, oh, uh, these probably more of a gold to that. So, and actually what's funny is that initially, oh, oh thanks, Bina. So Abzan, uh, it was more like this. Oh, let's try this. Let's see what happens here. How's about Indian yellow combined with fluorescent purple? Wow, that's going to be interesting. So this will be a little pin line wash right here. That's going to be very interesting. Let's see what happens with this. Down in here, maybe then. A little bit of the Van Dyke Brown, too. Uh, Abacar, I, uh, I know a few folks that have, they're not in the, I don't think they're in the chat right now. I, I don't know if they were super convinced on the old Holland stuff. But I, I'm pretty sure that a few folks have actually tried it. Thanks, Bina, for posting that link. And uh, everybody, please give AD Creations a follow. Also, her husband there. We're just trying to trying to lift his spirits a little bit there. That would be fantastic. Because uh, that's what's so great about Twitch, right? Is that we all try to help each other out. So if you could help out another Twitch streamer in need, that would be sensational. So Abzan, that is the... That's the Green Stuff World... Uh, floral pigment there mixed with the linseed oil to uh, create that and uh, this video this would be the next one that goes up on the channel what's today the 14th so probably the 16th is when that's going on uh, and everybody please uh, check out what AD Creations uh, posted there and of course uh, I, I realize uh, that you didn't necessarily keep up with the pictures there free range uh, it's not easy right it is not easy. But if you have any sort of work in progress at all of that and you wanted to post that, again, feel free. Feel free. Now, I don't want this to get too much towards the red. So I'm going to head on over here to some of the... That's some of our Asphaltum, which uh, Drax introduced me to. And again, everybody, please give Drax a follow, too. Drax uh, did that first raid. It was very nice to do that. Uh, so, Nixel, there's no iridescent paint on that. No iridescent paint on that. There is on this one. So, this was done with the interference blues and uh, the interference, yeah, a little bit of the interference violet and green on that. Now, this, where did he go? He was just over here. He just is there, he is. This, I use the iridescent pearl white. This is one of my latest tutorial videos on the Patreon page that we wanted to do some black and steel. So I basically took very dark colors, indigo, Van Dyke brown, mixed them with the iridescent pearl white because essentially that's like a metal medium. That, that's essentially what it is. It's, they have it in acrylics too, and that's where I first uh, got the idea to do stuff like that was with the metal medium. But, but these days I'm using the iridescent pearl white. And of course you can, now this is the expensive way to do it right here. Or you could get iridescent pearl white powder, mix that with the linseed oil, and create your own, just like the interference paints. All right, everybody, please check out uh, Free Range. Free Range just posted an Insta link right there, so everybody, please go check that out. And again, Free Range, uh, thank you so much for the uh, for the raid. I appreciate that. I know this is a weird time. Well, for me to be starting, it's not weird for me to still be streaming at two, three, four in the morning. But, but you know, especially nowadays with the way things are. Oh, thanks, AD. Appreciate that. Yeah, so Nixel, it's something. Oh, my gosh. I don't remember when it was. Maybe 2013, 2012, 2013. And then someone approached us at a game store, and he said, Hey, I've got this this metal medium stuff. If I were to mix this with regular paint colors would they be metallic and i had no idea and he actually i think he gave me a jar and i tried it 
and sure enough it, it, it could take regular colors and it could make those into metallics now of course they have to be darker colors as soon as you mix an opaque light with it your metal effect is gone it is a uh, it is fini dead gone done all right so here see we're going to start to get some of this uh watch we are just going to take some of the paint out of this brush here and we're just going to use it more like a blendy brush so we got this green right here and the skin tone instead of doing a bunch of glazes or whatever what if I were to just take some of that green and just pull this out into the skin tone like this and again it's got to be a brush with no paint on it like so and we're just uh, doing a little bit of stippling on there not doing actual brush strokes just doing a little bit of stippling here let's do the other side here now and then we can come back over this with some of our regular skin tone now. But it's one way to get uh, some interesting little blends happening. Maybe get a little bit of that greenish color into here too. I mean, it's a mermaid after all, so probably would have some difference in the skin tones. So again, instead of mixing a whole bunch of colors right, don't need to do that. Uh, now, actually, Abzan, it was... Huh. Well, here, maybe I can do this. The The regular texture of these is really weird. It can be sometimes very powdery and kind of weird. So even if it's weird after you've mixed it, it can just, like, the stuff out of the tubes can be weird, too. Yeah, Bina, I was... Oh, hey, Wombat Combat Prime, Prime, how you doing? And everybody, please give Wombat Combat Prime a follow, too. So, Wombat, I hope that you're doing well. And uh, now, Wombat, did you just kind of get a starter set just to get yourself kind of underway there? All right, and what I'm going to try and do here is uh, some kind of colors here for the steel on this. Same here. Another sword there. And then let's see if I can't get some of my lighter tones in here. There we go. That's the, the radiant turquoise down there. Remember, I can still do some pin line washes in there if I feel like it. Now, Abzan, oh, now wait a minute, somewhere, ooh, it's going to take me a while to find, where are the Mandalorians? Where did those go? Because those were also done with all of the, the metals. Uh, I think we've, oh, we've already passed those, I think. Where's my Mandalorians here? Because those were all done in the same way with the interference paints. Well, here we did these guys. They also had the interference paints, but these right here, all of those, those are all on the channel here. So you can watch previous episodes uh, they're they're basically saved just like, uh, just almost like a YouTube video. Now I haven't had a chance to organize everything just yet. Um, again, <laughs> uh, it's been a little too crazy for that. But you, uh, once once I can finally get a chance to do that, I'll try and arrange these things where you can just go. All right, I want to see Lord of the Rings paintings, and you would just go to that particular category. Oh, that's cool, Wombat Combat. And uh, like I say to everybody, pick, uh, pick something that's nice and simple, right? Nothing too too complicated. Something that's got some simple shapes to it. And maybe even just use a few colors, right? Just, just use one light and one dark color and just kind of stick with that. Uh, I think we're all caught up, right? So again, I'm sorry if I miss anything in the chat. Um, the the camera boom is sort of blocking the chat from where uh, from where I'm looking at it. So uh, it, you can always do like a highlight message thing or something like that to try and uh, make it easier for me to see. You know what? I'm going to start to think about some lighter stuff up here just to get that. Just to get that situated. I'm just going to dive into some of the really yellow pale, maybe. A little bit of that Indian yellow. 
Love me the Indian yellow for sure. Uh, oh, hey, Jay Wedge. Nice to see you. Um, so, Jay Wedge, unfortunately, oh gosh, this was a couple of weeks ago, and there was something going on with the latest update that was killing people's microphones. And I basically, in the middle of the stream, had to ditch my microphone and plug in another one. And then when I plugged back the original one, for whatever reason, when I do those other scenes, it gets quieter. The reason why I didn't really mess with that is because I was supposed to, a month ago, rework this entire area. New microphone, new camera, new everything. And uh, folks in that were very kind to, to donate a lot of the equipment and stuff to the channel here, or, or you know, funds to get that. But that's when Kathy went into the hospital, so that that's been on hold ever since. Because if I change the microphone on one scene, I have to change the microphone on hundreds of scenes. So that hasn't happened yet. So I do apologize for the change in the, the sound levels. There's nothing I can do about that until we basically get all the new stuff hooked in. Now we're going to try There we go. Let's just try to get some of our lighter stuff there. Yeah, so J-Wedge, basically, I wasn't expecting that, you know, if I plug the same microphone back in, it would do weird stuff. But for whatever reason, it's not, uh, it doesn't act quite the same. It'll do that on new scenes, but it won't do it on the old scenes. And I, I don't know why. I have no idea why. But yeah, there was a week there where everybody's microphones did weird things. And that was the weird thing that happened here. So Jay Witch, I hope that you're doing good. Uh, nice to see, well, of course, nice to see you again, as always. Yeah, let me see, see if I can get some more green into that. Yeah. And maybe we'll start to lighten up there. Maybe we'll also get some light in the skin tone here. I'm probably... Or more of a... Nah, go with the... Let's go with the thalo green here. Let's see what happens with that. Because that might actually be more interesting. I know maybe they they want it to be more of a seashell kind of a thing, but let's just change this up here very quickly. Uh, but yeah, Ebzan, what's really fun is to take those, uh, well, either the iridescent pearl white or the interference colors and mix those with regular oil colors. Usually the darker ones work really well. So you can see here we're trying to also uh, do a little bit more with the face there. Yeah, J Wedge, the weird thing is it just was, and I had just uh, used that same setup for filming just hours before. Then I went to stream and I said, what the heck is going on here? So yeah, it was... It, it's weird, right, J-Wedge? Twitch is very twitchy. Okay. I think we've got our green in there now. Let's see if I can maybe do a little bit of a quick pin line wash there to get some even darker pearling black. Let's maybe use that. And let's really hit this with uh, some actual thinner here. There, let's just get a little bit of the dark down in here too. Again, that's the pearling black down in here. I know. I think uh, lethal shadows. Uh, didn't then you have something weird happen with your mic too? But yeah, there's so many darn scenes. Now, of course, the new ones that I added, I don't think they do that. I don't think they do. Uh, do I want to get into this yet? Not just yet. I'm going to see what I can do here uh, skin tone wise. You know what? I'm actually still going to keep going with these. Uh, this is not the Fanchion Red. That's actually the Naphthol Red. Because we haven't really gotten any of this into the skin tone yet. 
And you can see we're just kind of dry brushing that stuff in too, right? Yeah, Abzan, uh, I, I was really, uh, initially, that was what I wanted to do here, was was to use the interference colors. Now, one <coughs> one drawback to, well, any kind of metallic or interference color, whatever, is that on stream, well, that uh, it doesn't necessarily show up sometimes, or it just looks really weird. It has a lot of reflectivity to it. Well, of course, right? <laughs> you would think it would. And that can be a little bit of a trouble thing for trying to stream or film. I know that one Space Marine, was it Iron Hand Space Marine, I guess? That was not easy. That Day Wedge, uh... Oh, boy, I... <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a sec. Where is he? Here he is. <laughs> Gollum is like, ooh, um, that'll, that could feed a, that could feed a Smeagol for a long time. Don't even think about it, dude. <laughs> so, there's, there's a little bit of Gollum for you. Um, yeah, abs that's, uh, isn't that crazy, right, that you just, it's almost impossible to get pictures of it? Now you can see we've been adding that that little bit of naphtha red, but see it's a very much a dry brush here. We're just literally shoving that down into the crevices here, letting that mix with the uh, turquoise color as well. This is where the oils save you the time because you don't have to do all that stuff. We don't. Have, there's not a bunch. No, not a bunch of glazing or anything like that. We just get in here, and all we have to do is quite literally do a little bit of dry brush, and that's it. You can see she's got much more shading in the face, right? And we did the same thing here. It's very much the same thing. The face had almost nothing on it, and all of a sudden, a couple of lights. Then we came in here with the reflected light, and that completely changed how the face looked on that. And that was our uh, Saturday session. Thank you, Bitron, for doing the clip. Appreciate that. Uh, so, yeah, Bitron, I'm, I'm just really glad you are able to get your hands on the, the vehicles. The, the camo pattern was looking really sensational. So uh, you have to be really pleased about that. I'm just going to move the camera just a smidge here. If I can't, there we are. That's better. Yeah, they. I was in that fluorescent video that I was just telling you about that I just filmed a few hours ago. Now, I mentioned in that that it can be a little bit uh, of a learning curve with the application of the fluorescent paints. It, it, it takes a little while to kind of get uh, get your handle on controlling those things. Uh, see that? The skin tone starting to look a little bit different here, isn't it? There we are. Ah, more of our light skin right there. Oh, yeah, now... Uh, so are, are they the Firefly version, or are they just uh, are they just going to be the regular variety? More here. Uh, so Nixel, uh, yeah. Sorry that the stream times have been so weird. Most of the time, well, like today. <laughs> Uh, I initially thought, man, I could almost maybe stream at my normal Monday time, and then it became very clear that there wasn't going to be any Monday stream. And then it sort of became a weird early Tuesday stream. Hey, Nasper. Oh, hey, Stila, how you doing? Oh, uh, just, uh, just a regular variety then. And everybody, please give Steela Rebel a follow. So, Steela, how the heck are you doing? Steela also streams the oil painting. And uh, Steela can post uh, some pictures of her stuff, too. Because, again, uh, Steela does some really nifty stuff. 
Uh, let's see. Oh, thanks, thanks, Lito Shadow. Uh, what are we? A half an hour? No, we're we're 55 minutes in. 55 minutes in. And this uh, was just primer 55 minutes ago, and we've had what three raids? I think. I think we've had at least three raids. So see how we've uh, kind of changed the, the shoulder there a little bit. A little bit less green in there. Uh, Terra Rosa is such a utilitarian color. It can it can bots great for skin tone. But we also use it on vehicles because uh, it's a fantastic rust color, believe it or not. It is uh, absolutely fantastic for rust. Here, we'll get a little bit more of our light in here. A little, of, uh, a little more over here. Yeah. And we'll we'll get into our blending brush there too, but you can see how the the paint just starts to get on that brush and it starts to essentially blend it by itself. Uh, Stila, it's a well we use some indigo on here on the on this. Pretty simple. It was just the, it was phthalo green and some Prussian blue, and then up here Egyptian violet. So yeah, phthalo green, Prussian blue. Very very basic. Now this. Was uh, this is a video I just filmed right here? This was used in the homemade fluorescent purple, and there's actually two different colors of purple. There's one that's a little bit warmer than the other one. And uh, Steel, I think you saw this one, right? The Lethal Shadows uh, miniature that we painted on Saturday. I think you saw that one, didn't you? And uh, Steel, if you want to post a you know, insta link or anything like that to to some of your current stuff i'm sure people will get a real kick out of seeing that now what i want to do potentially here is either i don't know if it'd be scales but some kind of marking sort of like what we did here something like that on, on this one so this is from printomancer this bust here and well here's a, another one of those again we this is our homemade magenta fluorescent paint on that one Go back and check those sessions out. Uh, yeah, Stila, the, uh, I don't get a chance to use Thalo Green all that often, so it's kind of fun when I finally get a chance to, to utilize that. I don't remember the last time I used Thalo Blue. I have some. I just don't remember when the heck is the last time I used it. And, of course, uh, well, we've been using more and more of the naphthol red, just now that we know it's a staining color. I still haven't gotten the Gamlin version yet. So again, we'll lighten up the skin tone there, and you can see uh, I, I don't mix anything on the palette, right? It's mixing here because, well, the miniature becomes your palette. Why wouldn't it, right? Uh, everybody, please check out the uh, the Instagram link that Stila just posted. Because Stila is really fantastic with the oils. So please go check out Stila's link there. And again, we're just getting underway here. We are, we're still less than an hour in. And I'm thinking that the, some folks would not mind being able to get this far on something in 58 minutes. Uh, now, Stila, which uh, which Thalo, Thalo blue is it? Uh, and I haven't. Well, let's see. Did I? I haven't had a chance to use the Prussian blue from Williamsburg yet. Or did I? I don't think I have yet. Or if I did, it was very very minimal, just with the the schedule being so messed up here. And oh, and and Stila, I hope that the the visa thing, all that stuff, works out as well. I know that's uh that's like you said it's gonna be a long process potentially. Ah uh, yeah, Absent, it's a it's a very nice well it's it's got a lot of coolness to it, right? That that's really nifty. Here, let me uh look at this. Nice and neat, right? <laughs> yeah. 
Nice and neat. Now what we're going to do is we're going to again try and make our sure we've got a blending brush here that's not all filled with paint. And we're going to take the edge off of some of this. We're not doing this, we're doing this. It's really straight up and down. Just a little tap, tap, tap there. Hashtag no layers, right? Why do we need to do layers when we can do that? Hashtag no layers. Uh, then please check out the vehicles that Bithron just posted. Uh, those are your fins, right, uh, Bithron? So very, very cool choices on those. Uh, so, oh, you've had a chance to use uh, Williamsburg's Prussian Blue Nosferatu? I, I, I think maybe I might have used it uh, a tiny bit, and that's it. I'm going to keep going with my lighter skin. To, oh, yeah, here too on uh, this side of the schnoz. Ah, uh, boy, Stila, oh gosh, uh, I can try and check for you. I can try it, I do. Uh, I know that Thalo Blue, oh, Ultram I think Ultramarine Blue is Stila. I don't know about Prussian Blue. Ultramarine Blue might be in their traditional color set. Because uh, was it, it was the modern color set that we got, well, that we're uh, trying to get the Fanchon Red and the Egyptian Violet and all that stuff, right? Uh, oh, that's that's cool, Nasferatu. Oh, wait a minute, where's uh ah? So these brushes not so fantastic necessarily for painting, but they do make good blending brushes because they're soft. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's not how these folks intended me to actually use their brushes. It's just a blending brush, but is what it is, right? I think, yeah, you know, uh, and we, oh, and the other thing is, too, we've been, where the heck did you go? We have been playing around more with this. I never actually had this color before. Landress was nice enough to send it here. Now, unlike the quick dry white, this does have alkids in there. Un, uh, now, unlike the, the Gamlin Silver, which just happens to be right over here, it's not pressurized like this. This also have alkids in it. But, boy, when you open this tube, half the tube comes out of it. The other one, not so much. So... I don't know what that means. I, I have no idea why the silver just comes shooting out of that tube, but it does not happen with the fast matte white. So not not sure what's going on with that. I'm going to see if I can add a little bit more light here. We also have to get some more of the, uh, I must have said and Red, but there we go. Get some of that, and... Get that here. Also on the other parts of the face, too, I think, just to uh, brighten that up a touch. Yeah, it, it's weird, Bithron. I have no idea why. I have no idea what's up with that. But for whatever reason, that silver one, you open that up, and it's not just me. That's everyone else that's ever used the Gamlin Silver. A lot of folks really like it, but they say contents under pressure. Oh, look where I got the brush, too. Closer to the back of the brush than to the front of the brush. That actually gives me more control, believe it or not. Way more, as I like to say, leverage. Way more control doing that. And then I might even still try to get some uh, greenish whatever in the uh, corners of her mouth, too. Hey, Waffles, nice to see you again. Ah, oh boy, I would I would like to enjoy some Waffles. That would be so fantastic. It's been, I think it's been years since I last had Waffles. That has to be. I'm going to try and get a little bit more of my light skin tone over here. And again, we'll just uh, take a blending brush to that, won't we? 
So let's see, we just threw that lighter color on there. Then we'll take our blending brush, a little tap, 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 and uh, poof, there it is. We also have ourselves a Valandar the Red. I was just about to add some of that here. I'm going to actually go with turquoise in there, I think, instead of the red. I don't know. Let me see what happens here. Let's try this first. So, Valandar, I hope that you're doing well. Nice to see you. Everybody, please give Valandar the Red a follow, too. So, Valandar, I, I hope that the, the painting goes well and, and, well, the sculpting, too. Thank you so much, AD. Thanks for posting the links to the Patreon page and all the goodies. Yeah, so our, th we just literally were filming this right before I started. Uh, this is what I was filming here. So it's a, about a 100-minute long tutorial, as usual. That was about, obviously, object source lighting, but multiple light sources and, of course, uh, seeing what we could do with some couple of different colors of purple. Back to the blending brush here again. Yeah, okay, now now we're starting to get the uh, now we're getting places here. And see I can take this, look at this green here. See I can just uh take my blending brush and just start to push that around here. No need to worry about glazing or anything like that. Just push the paint where I think I want it. I might go perline, perline black. Let's do this. Why not? Perline black here. Because we need to get some darks around our eyes here. We have lots of light, but not much in the way of dark. So let's focus on this. And then we have to do those elements too, I just realized. Get this dark over the eye here. And then we can come back with our lights again into the eye. Like so, okay. Uh, I just posted a comparison of painting in July of 2018 and from last week. Oh gosh, what did we used to call? Oh, Valander, we used to, actually, Kath and I would do an exercise called Then and Now. And we would take a figure that we might have painted, well, like, it's, like you did years ago. And we would actually try to paint the same figure and as similar of a color scheme as we could. You know, maybe uh, adding some more freehand or whatever. And then we would take the pictures and post them side by side like you. And that was a great exercise. It really was. And just get some of the paint off of the brush there. Let me go this way again to try and get my the light in the eye here. It might need to be a little bit thicker. might actually have been a little bit too thin. Ah, uh, so what? Well, there's a little bit of a difference, uh, <laughs> right, uh, right, Valander, and those types. All right, let me uh, can hit the other eye here, like so, and then maybe even some of the lighter skin tone here. I just want to make sure we're not missing anything. Jeez, uh, oh, sorry to hear that, Nosferatu. That doesn't sound like fun right there. Sorry that, uh, how the heck did it, well, actually, no, check that. Never mind. Because I haven't been able to do the studio redo here. I've been losing, I've been losing everything. So uh, I can completely understand how anything can get lost. Check, never mind. Now we're going, that's uh, again got some of the phthalo green in it. So I do the same over the other eye over here. Can you see that? Looks like you can. And, and for the folks that are new here and don't, don't, uh, don't realize, we are using oil paints. 
This is all being done with the oils. Uh, now I've got some radiant green. Actually, this is mixed with a little bit of the Indian yellow here. And then we'll let that also get blended in the same way, where we're just going to let this... So I'm going to take some of the paint off of the brush here. And again, no layers. Right? I threw that lighter color on there. Oh, and I just blended it with the darker color. I don't, don't mix on the palette. This is my palette. It's the exact same thing when I do 2D art. The same approach. Now, well, of course, sometimes when I'm doing the 2D art, especially on this one, about the first 45 minutes, it almost looked like a watercolor before we got down to doing all the uh, r more regular, traditional oil painty type stuff on it. That's a highly traditional or highly uh, traditional term for it, right there, oil painty. Yeah, you can. That's very official. Now I need to get a little bit of the skin tone snuck in between the crown and the eyes. Let me see if I can do this. Or the uh, whatever that is hanging from the crown. Okay, just about got Okay, now we've got some stuff on the skin there. Good enough. Uh, so it's uh, the usual Princeton, though it's a, it's a liner brush. Uh, you can also use the Cotman's. Uh, I think they also still have liner, you know, actual liner brushes like that too. But liner brush is the key. And again, look where my my hand is way far away from that metal ferrule, as far away as it can go. Because that actually lets me have way more control over it than if I'm, I've got a death grip on the brush. We say it all the time, right? Caress the brush, don't crush the brush. More of the light over here. Just because... Okay. I'm going to take that red room, just let that red get mixed into some of the existing skin tone there. We'll take this light, we're going to spread that out a little bit too. Uh, so these, well, Normally about between five and six bucks, well, five fifty or so. Now, of course, I missed the super sale. It's probably a Memorial Day sale. I think they're about four bucks or four ten, something like that. I just, I really wish I could have taken advantage of that. Uh, it wasn't quite meant to be. We were a little bit occupied on Memorial Day, but yeah, it would have been nice to get those because. Uh, uh, I mean, that was practically, what, about 20% off or so? That was sensational. And, of course, I do like the Royal Lang Nickels. Uh, I've kind of used up a bunch of those, and I haven't had a chance to, to get another batch of those either. Uh, if you're wondering why I haven't seen as many of them on the streams and such, they've kind of gotten used up, and I just don't have any. I hate Dark Dan again. Uh, actually, Dark Dan again, that was the, well, for various reasons, and then I filmed this. But then when I realized it, you know, things are just getting kind of crazy. So, uh, and oh, the, here's the other thing is I basically have to be up at 7, 730 or so to help out Kathy. And I figured I would just stay up doing this. <clears throat> I would just stay up doing this until... So yeah, we've got about three, three and a half hours or so <clears throat> to when I have to help out Kathy. And I thought it'd just be a little bit easy if I was doing this, unless I'm already asleep, 
And oh, what do we call oh, sleep streaming? Yes, unless I'm already sleep streaming, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. So yeah, it was it was not the not the most spectacular day. So I was thinking, well, we're not gonna be able to do this. But uh, had already missed the Monday stream. And since I <clears throat> was able to get the video shot, and since uh, I was going to have to be awake anyways, I thought, well, why not stay awake with friends? So here we are with our friends. And I, I really appreciate everybody keeping me company here on the uh, on the vigil. I thought there was a little piece of fuzz hanging off of that bugger. So, again, thanks, everybody. Appreciate it. And I know this is not my usual stream time, although it used to be. There was a time where the streams used to begin at around 2.30 in the morning central time. Now, that was YouTube. That wasn't, uh, that wasn't Twitch. But don't be surprised if this actually happens more. So Dark Dan again, I went from living on, uh, well, I talk about actually living on Melbourne time. Holy smokes. Now, well, thanks, uh, thanks AD, and thanks Nosferatu. too. Ah, hey, there's Thranuel. Thranuel, nice to see you. Well, Thranuel, speaking of schedules, yours, uh, is kind of bouncing around back and forth from night to day, quite literally, right? Uh, White Squirrel, you know what's, uh, you know how Facebook does those uh, Facebook memories? It, it'll show me those. And I keep thinking, okay, those were seven, eight, nine years ago. No, those were, uh, some of those were as recently as 2018. Or maybe even 2019. I think they were like the most recent ones were at late 2018 or something like that, uh, weren't they? I could be wrong. Ah, I thought you were having a night shift there. Oh, well, Absent. Uh, let's just say this this could be more common at least over the next several weeks here. Uh, now, when I'm actually going to sleep is a mystery because uh, I don't think sleep is going to be part of the day today. So if the next time you hear me and I, I just am uh, talking complete gibberish, it's because I never did actually get to sleep. Yeah, let's do some more of our lights on the hair there. Uh, so you're having a night shift there. Well, Nosferatu, um, I, I, yeah, you know, uh, some folks they post a lot of their lives on on social media, right? And then of course uh, there might be things you don't really want to be reminded of, like you were saying. So that that's why I kind of uh, just stick to miniatures. Now, well, there's a variety of reasons I just stick to miniatures. So when I get the, you know, back in 2015 or back in 2011, basically I just, I get to see what miniatures I was working on. Hey, Moe, nice to see ya. So yeah, White Squirrel, um, I used to start it about, uh, I don't know if the Facebook, li oh, <laughs> believe it or not, I was f uh, doing those in the basement with a really junky, like, uh, 2G phone or something like that. And ironically enough, I had kind of hoped that maybe I would be able to take, you know, the 5G phone and be able to stream either battle reports or uh, painting stuff like large terrain or uh, backdrops, terrain backdrops and stuff. I don't know if... Uh, I know that uh, Jinx, well, she was streaming on her phone when her computer went all wacky and she had to get a new one. But in the interim, she used her phone to stream. And it was it had its limitations, but it worked. 
So, Moe, I hope that you're doing well. So, uh, I guess we're just going to stick with uh, with some of the lighter colors here, then. Like that. Oh, well, Thranio, I'm glad that you were able to get a kick out of that. Uh, so, Thranio, here's the one that I just filmed tonight before the stream. So, this is using the fluorescent purple from Green Stuff World, and then actually making a couple of different purples out of it. One that's more of a warmer variety. Oh, thanks, Moe. Um, yeah, was it one hour, 20 minutes ago? That was uh, that was just primer. Wow, yeah, one hour, 20 minutes ago. Uh, obviously, the oils are a huge, huge help in that, but also to use in the bigger brushes. I mean, if I was doing this in acrylics, there would be a lot of things done the same way. We would still be using the big brushes. We would still, well, basically be doing the uh, shaded base coat. Remember that, uh, White Squirrel? Uh, so I think we're okay. Yeah, I think we're all caught up there. So again, uh, sorry if I missed something in the chat. The, uh, the camera boom is basically right smack dab in front of the chat. So it, it's harder to see. That is one of the things I'm hoping won't be happening with all of the new setup. That, that uh, we'll be able to have the screen, no matter where the camera is, it won't be sitting right in front of the screen. So again, these uh, the Princeton liner brushes, I, I wish I had been able to do that uh, Memorial Day sale because at four bucks a pop, that is a steal. And these things take a beating, like Valandar was saying. They, they just, I mean, you can really beat these things up. And they just, they just keep going, which is really tremendous. Now, do I want to... See, so I wanted the, the gemstone a cooler green. Now, here I'll take some of this, and we'll even mix it with the brilliant yellow pale. Can't look at, see, my hand's not even in the picture because it's so close to the end of the brush as opposed to the front of the brush. And we have all kinds of lovely control over that. Do you see that brush bouncing around at all? Nope. Well, basically, I've got one arm sitting there on a... Well, both of my elbows are on one of those... Uh, the wrist rests that people use that uh, to prevent the carpal tunnel stuff. So that basically keeps my wrists in one place. And not moving around. And then I've got... See, look, it's not going anywhere. And I'll take this hand, stick it right here. No, no shakies, no movement. <clears throat> right... I'm sorry about that. Ah, Thranio, I have not painted any Tau stuff. I only ever had the, uh, I think it was two miniatures somebody sent me to paint as commissions. Oh, gosh. What are the uh, crisis suits, uh, Thranio? Is that what they call them? Uh, those, those seem like because you could do some camo patterns on them or something like that. And maybe some of the... Uh, some of the smaller Tau vehicles because we could actually fit those on camera easier. So it's, yeah, it's not like a uh, nothing against Tau. I just don't have any here. And buying Tau stuff is that's uh, unfortunately not on the menu. Oh, this is on the menu though. Egyptian Violet. That's on the menu here. I was messing around with some Prussian blue there. But what I got now is the Egyptian violet there. More? Why not? Uh, not a pin line wash, actually. It's relatively thin, but also not a pin line wash. So you got the, there's the crisis suits, and what are they, piranhas or something like that. Uh, I just, so some kind of a digital camo type thing or whatever could be interesting. Now we got the, uh, oh, here we go, Egyptian violet. 
Indian yellow. Let's combo those together to make our uh, nice, really, really dark brown. That's a very intense brown color. Ah, well, Thranio, I'm glad you are able to get some of that. Now, uh, I'm guessing that the Gamlin Naphthol Red is probably nicer than the Richeson. I could be wrong. So I think you actually have the nicer of the Naphthols. But again, I've, I don't know when I'll ever get a chance to get a tube of the Gamlin stuff. But uh, Dano <coughs> says that it's staining and everything else. Uh, yeah, Nosferatu, I was thinking of that. Uh, oh, gosh. Uh, is it Harlequins also that kind of have the uh, the stealthy type thing? And sometimes people would draw Harlequins or paint Harlequins as they're just literally emerging from a wall or something like that. Yeah, uh, certainly would be fun to do that with some Tau stuff, wouldn't it? So that is again uh, that that violet, Egyptian violet, Indian yellow mix with uh, an asphaltum chaser. No, uh, I'm not sure Drax is still around, but Drax was uh, he was the one that uh, introduced me to the asphaltum. That's a gambling color, and that's. It's got some really interesting properties to it. We use it all the time on our cavalry units. And I do believe this, yeah, this horsey right here, that was the one that was painted with the asphaltum. So this is our latest Song of Ice and Fire unit right here. And uh, that was the, uh, oh, brown matter, right? There was a, uh, one of our grays there, and we did the tan on that. So uh, I'm trying to get some Song of Ice and Fire stuff prepped for not just future streams, but some more tutorials. A bunch of new Lannister stuff that I thought could be good for well, updating the Halberds, but also uh, doing the super shiny Sky Earth non-metallic with the oils. Because uh, why not? Ah, oh boy, through Thranuel, that sounds really good. <laughs> that that sounds uh, sensational right there. And I, I did paint, uh, I think, an entire unit of Harlequins for uh, commission, at least one unit of Harlequins. There was an awful lot of diamonds involved, so I'm thinking uh, Harlequins. Well, actually, I did paint a lot of Eldar stuff back in the day. Now, who knows, maybe if there's some uh, 3D printed Schmeldar somewhere or something like that that we could maybe uh, print out and have, we could start to do some Schmeldar on the channel. Which sounds all kinds of wrong. But 3D printing is kind of handy. Because, uh, especially when you don't actually play 40k. Now the eyes, I might uh, try and make that a little bit bigger. And then maybe go with some kind of a light blue for the eye. I don't know. I'll have to see what happens first, though. See if I can make this one a little bit bigger here. Just expand that a little more. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thanks, AD, for posting the, the Patreon link there. Uh, at, at this point, you're at least 1,100 hours worth of videos to watch. Uh, if you do the Army Painter Pledge, could be more, could be closer to 12. Uh, if, you, if you can binge all that, well, then that's good because there's about 20 to 24 hours of new videos that happen every single month. So... Uh, if, if Disney and Netflix and all that, if, if you've watched it all and you got nothing left, that's pretty much an inexhaustible source. And those videos, uh, I try to do as many different things and experimental stuff as I can. So sometimes, and there's folks in the chat that can attest, things, unplanned things happen. 
We'll just we'll, we'll put it that way. Unplanned things sometimes happen. Because if everything just goes absolutely according to plan every single time, you're going to say, well, wait a minute, why is this so difficult for me? Or why did I get surprised by this? So I say, you know what? Let's, uh, let's have the folks see what happens when I'm just trying some out for the very first time. Yeah, and uh, Ebsen, I think you can, you can attest that some of them aren't the happiest of accidents. I keep thinking about, well, the, the Senele paints, and then there was some other kind of paint that also didn't necessarily go terribly well. And then remember the green stuff world? Uh, the terrain stuff? When that kept breaking as I was trying to take it out of the mold? Yeah, that was uh, that was a bit of an irritant right there. Now, what are we doing here? We're taking some of our purple over here. And uh, we'll be light, making this a little bit lighter as well. Uh, I'm just kind of doing a little bit of a change here on the, on the color because we have an awful lot of the thalo. We're trying to get into a little bit more of a... Uh, purple right here that might end up being too light I don't know what's kind of funny is that this this uh, purple right here it reminds me an awful lot of the cobalt violet which I think did we use the cobalt violet on here yeah it's certainly a heck of a lot <coughs> cheaper than cobalt violet yeah being a uh, let's see what was the oh uh it was trying those new brushes, right? And didn't I just kind of chuck them off to the side right at the start of the video, about nine minutes in? I just said, well, these brushes don't really work for this. And I literally just threw them off to the side. I think there was a couple of things in that video that were just, uh, well, that didn't go the way it was supposed to. Oh, look, that didn't go the way it was supposed to either. Yeah, Stila says the scale 75s had uh, some surprises, right? And uh, Abzan, the, the, the classic optiling oils, right? Remember, oh, good grief. Wow. And those are still sitting around here somewhere. That was Those were going to go away when I did the, the studio redo. Those were going to go from, they're, they're tucked in a box somewhere in this room to not even in this room anymore. Banished. Yeah, I could I could swear, Bina, there's been a couple of times, well, yeah, especially in the summer, I even had to, I actually had to kill one while I was filming that purple video. Oh, speaking of purples, here we're starting to get some into the fins right there. Ah, well, Bithron, that's uh, that's economy of use right there. I'm glad that's working out for you, too. There we are. See that uh, in the depths of the shadow? A little bit of that purple in there. So see, this starts to take on a little different look. And, of course, none of this is a light color yet. Seriously, this is all pretty dark colors here. None of this is very light. Now this might start getting a little lighter. Of course, we can also use that radiant magenta. And actually start to make that a little bit lighter. I'll probably, yeah, I'll be coming back in with the dark. Probably some of the, actually the uh, Prussian blue in there. Oh, geez. Well, Bina, I'm really glad because I know I've said it in some of the videos, right, where I'll just kind of go, mm, you know, I think you can save yourself the money on this. And, well, you, usually it happens with brushes, right, Bina? But sometimes it still happens with paints. Because, oh my gosh, uh, oh, the Senele paint, and then there was another thing, too. Well, even the Richeson paints, those were... Uh, an acquired taste, I guess we should say. Sort of. Yeah, it's just, uh, now, 
I know, be, uh, remember, uh, Stila, we were talking about the word uh, slimy. Remember that? To just describe, and uh, it was the Holbane. That was the Holbane paint, which were a bummer because they were kind of nice. They, they seemed to be nice paints. I had a lot of high hopes for them, and yet they kind of had that weird sort of slimy feel to them, and they didn't really adhere. It wasn't, wasn't like the Optilung. But it was sort of like that. Yeah, Waffles. Uh, and it was a bummer, too, because someone had sent me those, and I was really looking forward to it. I thought those had come after the oil, brusher, the oil brushers from MIG Ammo. And then I realized after I used those things, I went, nope, these came before the oil brushers because they probably did those. Then there was the split with MIG, and then they basically improved on the uh, Optilungs with the oil brushers. All right, so see now, that's actually basically a dark green that we put back in here where there's the, there's the violet. So we actually have greens in the shadows of the violets there. Uh, so, yeah, Stila, um, and uh, was it getting the Gamlin or the uh, Williamsburg where you could f uh, finally have an a, like a total in-person comparison yourself between the Holbane and the, I think it was Williamsburg, right? Or no, was it Gamlin, maybe? Now, I'm trying to think the last time I've used Cadmium Red. I only used it in one tutorial video recently. But now that I've got the Fanchion Red and now the Naphthol, there's just no real reason. Oh, here's the other thing, too. And I think I asked... Does this even say what series it is? Uh, series 2. So this is way cheaper than Cadmium Red. I don't know if anybody's used the, or priced out, the, well, I know a few people have priced out the Gamlin uh, Naphthol Red. So if anybody's got a, a handle on that, uh, let me know. Because I'm thinking that's way cheaper than Cadmium Red, for sure. Uh, so you, you could be able to get all the, the big three, as we like to call them here. The big three. That's the Windsor Newton, Williamsburg, and Gamlin. I basically use those in equal parts. Pretty much one third, one third, and one third. Uh, I think. Uh, oh, now, oh, waffles. Uh, okay, that's good. Cause, oh gosh, I don't know if they're still in the chat, but someone had asked about the old Holland colors. And I knew there was a couple of people that had used them, but that was really early in the stream. Uh, and uh, there, wasn't, uh, there wasn't a whole bunch of folks in yet at the time. But uh, for anybody that's tried the old Holland, if, you, if that person is still, whoever it was that asked, I just don't remember. Uh, if they asked and they're still in the chat and someone uh, that's used the old Holland can give a, a yay or nay on those. Because uh, that's the best thing about Twitch and the oils is because, well, folks like Stila, Bina, everybody's Thranuel, they're all using them, Pun Expected, Grim, Green Fairy, everybody's using the oils. And i uh, already have forgetting so many names. Sorry about that. My brain is not really working right now. But they've all been kind enough to try out those paints and then basically say, hey, look, this is not worth it, or you need to try this because this is really good and it could really work for this, this, or this. So it's really great to have everybody just uh, doing their own tests, their own scientific experiments, and then uh, kind of cluing me in saying, all right, you, know, you, you got to try this here. You have to try this. It could, it could be really helpful for such and such a thing. So that is appreciated, because uh, I can only test so many things. Now, Asgard, 
I stopped using sables years ago. Uh, it wasn't that I didn't like sables. As a watercolorist, I used to only use sable brushes. Unfortunately, the quality controls on those just became so horrific, and they got so expensive, and then they became hard to get. I just went to the synthetics, and these are far more durable, and they also have way more snap to them here. So that's that's why I'm able to do almost use the brush sideways like this because it is not a sable, but it has a fantastic tip on it. And uh, like I said, they are super durable. And of course, uh, I can get three of these for the price of one sable brush. If I can get them on a super sale, I can get almost four of them for the price of one sable brush. And they last a long time. It's it's amazing. Uh, so thranual, the they will settle. That's why you want to have the agitators in there. Now, of course, uh, these were the uh, nail polish containers I was telling you about. Uh, this is going to be airtight. The plastic bottles are most likely not going to be airtight. Uh, because obviously nail polish containers, right, they don't want that stuff getting all over the place. So... Uh, my advice is is nail polish containers. You can get those on Amazon. They are not expensive. And, and uh, I don't do all the paint in the jars anymore. So I only just do specific ones. Like, well, the metallics, the fluoros, the ones that I have to mix. Taking the powdered pigments and, and, and such. All right, so there we got some some violet there now. How's about uh, some of this? Whatever's going on here, something like that. Okay, so Abacar. Ah, uh, see, Schminky. That's the other. And I know a lot. Uh, several folks use the Schminky, and they like it. Are you using the Norma? Are you using the Mussini? Oh, and the center light. So you're using the Mussini. That's the. Uh, the Norma is the student grade, right, uh, right, Abacar? Now, Steela, how did your experiment on the empty paint tubes uh, finally end up? I know that the, I think it was the Olympics came around, because uh, you got your Muller and all that other stuff, right? But there was still a few key things that you needed, I think. But hopefully you actually got to conclude your experiment there with the paint tubes. Uh, let's see. Oh, Dark Dan hasn't tried the old Holland yet. Someone just, they're really stiff. Uh, well, now, Dark Dan again. Uh, what's funny is that those Richeson paints, and well, also the scale 75 even, uh, we've kind of determined that I guess the reason why they stoke so much linseed oil in those things is because they wanted to be really soft out of the tube. We don't need that, right? Because we can... We can make them softer. We can add that stuff ourselves. Subtracting that is really, uh, well, impossible. So we would much rather just add it ourselves, wouldn't we? But uh, we just wish they would let us do that. Uh, so Abzan, there was no time for that anymore because I was just going through them so fast. There was no time to mix the paint. And I've been using the oils for, well, about 40 years so I was so familiar with them, there was just no point to it anymore. The reason why I mixed them in the jars was for a class. And even this year's Adepticon, I just ended up using these. So I, everybody got a row of these six colors, and that was the Adepticon class right there, instead of mixing them up in jars. Ah, boy, Steeler, you're going to have to send me a picture. Yeah, steal it. <laughs> you could send me a picture of your nifty steal up steal up oils. Now, did you print yourself up some nice labels for them? Are they are they tiny stein oils? Ah, so uh, Thranuel also tried the old Holland and the Norma. Okay, the Norma is the students. Okay. So yeah, the. Uh, you could say that the Gamlin paints and even the Williamsburg paints, they're not exactly soft out of the tube or whatever, but 
No, well, we just add some thinner, right? And then they we're all good. We don't need that uh, right out of the tube to be super thin. We can certainly do that ourselves. We can figure it out. Uh, well, Dirk Danigan, typically, well, with the oils, you, you can, remember, you can thin the oils, but you can't dilute them. Now, unlike the acrylics, right? And, uh, well, anytime I'm doing object source lighting, either one of these, whether it's the orange or whether it's this, the lightest lights in these areas were pin line washes. So the lightest lights there was somewhere around 95% thinner, maybe more, and yet it's still covered very efficiently. Uh, now, of course, we'll, I, I guess you'll, you'll find out. <laughs> you'll find out when you uh, try those out. But, of course, uh, well, as always, let me know what you find out, because I'll be curious... Uh, the Schminke Mussini are also really thick. Well, see, that's kind of, uh, that would be my preference. That would actually be my preference. Now, now here, we c I can see that the color that's already here is mixing with the color that's on the brush, and that's good because it's just sort of getting naturally darker all by itself. Uh, Abocar, <laughs> I think you've seen the video where I tried those Senelays. I tried them twice, I think. Yeah, I think I tried them twice, and they're just still sitting around, not, not being used. I think there was at least a couple of the colors that I didn't even uh, use in the second attempt, if I remember right. That was a long time ago, and I've tried to forget that one. Where's that? Oh, here it is. Radiant turquoise. Yeah. Well, let's see if we can really start to uh, pump up some lighter stuff in here. I'll just go maybe back to the radiant green. A little bit of the turquoise. Ah, the Schminky, oh, the Schminky S. Fultum. Now, Dark Dan again. Boy, I, it'll be interesting if anybody ever does a direct comparison of that with the Gamlin S. Fultum. Because uh, I tried, I think it was the Richeson. Yeah, I think, yes, uh, I think Grimm sent me the Richeson S. Fultum, and it was not. He said it wasn't really like the Gamlin S. Fultum. He was, it was really not like the Gamlin, Gamlin S. Fultum. I uh, wasn't super thrilled with that one. It just didn't have that weird kind of magical property that the S. Fultum does. And much like the Radiance, I can't quite necessarily put the handle on what special thing that is. All right, AD, thank you so much. I appreciate it. And thanks for posting the links too, AD. Now, speaking of posting links, so AD, before you head out, uh, be sure to shout out yourself and, and the hubby there. And everybody, please give both, uh, or give, sorry, give AD Creations a file. Sorry, was, uh, never mind. Sorry, AD. Uh, brain's not working here. <laughs> Brain is not working. All right, let's... Uh, All right, Bithron, you have a good one. Uh, I t who knows? I might be doing this again Tuesday you know, or into Wednesday morning. I don't know. Uh, I think things are going to be very much randomized now. So I might be streaming at really, really weird times in the future here. Is that too... Yeah, it's getting too... I'm going to head back over here and get some of the phthalo green, I think. There we go. Yeah, it was getting a little too too light, too fast there. 
And as light as that is, that's not actually our lightest light either. Uh, also, now Thranu also has the Mussini as Fultum. So thanks, AD, and of course, AD. I'm glad that the, you know, the drawing, uh, sorry, the the coloring could be saved too. And uh, I don't know if you wanted to post a, a link to that as well, before you head out. I think that's what I was trying to spit out, AD. Sorry about that. Here, uh, you know, what? I'm gonna keep going with the same turquoise here. And again, we have not yet begun to actually put light colors there. We haven't really even gotten to that stage yet. Yeah, Bitter, I'll try and uh, shoot you a message there during the day. Yeah, if I don't respond to any messages right away, it's because I'm face down on the floor somewhere. Possibly face down on top of the phone. That's happened. <laughs> that has happened where, well, I've actually had the phone hit me in the face. Or I was trying to message people into the wee wee hours of the morning. And the next thing I know, that phone lands on my face. Let me see if I can lighten this up just a smidge. I want to see what happens. And then I'm going to take this potentially to the other side too. Because we have it worked there. And I also want to let this paint have a chance to set. We talk about that all the time, right? Give that paint a chance to set. And not going to dry. I suppose it could if you stoke it full of alkids, but we don't do that. Not, not really big into the alkids. Mostly because you just you would end up with a paint that dries much faster in one area than another. I know there was one time where I was trying to exercise, and one of my exercises is laying on the exercise mat and doing these uh, leg presses and stretches with weights on them. And I had the phone, and I was trying to message or something like that. And that thing fell out of my hands and bopped me right in the head. That left a mark. I'll tell you that. Hey, Oliver. Nice to see you. Oh, thanks, Oliver. Yeah, we're doing uh, a little bit of a Loot Studios here. It's been a while since we've had a chance to paint a Loot Studios figure. I actually do have several printed up. I just haven't been able to prep them. There was one that was missing its base. I finally got that base printed. That's around somewhere. Yeah, Stila, the elk. Have you, uh, how many paints have you tried that had the alkids in them? I mean, well, there's obviously the Gamlin Silver does. And, of course, well, the, the oil brushers do. I didn't think they did because I never saw alkids on the label. But apparently you do not have to say that alkids are what's in there. Which I find interesting, given how there's all these other things that have to be on the label. Why that one wasn't too. Oh, and thanks, thanks, AD, for posting the links uh, to the Patreon to appreciate that. Sorry that my voice is going wacky here. Uh, all of the Kathy has all of the cough drops. I don't have any of them here. So normally that's what I would just uh, grab for myself is some cough drops. Yeah, okay. I just get a little bit of the green there. Now we got to shift away from that. We're going to go back to some of the the little green because we got to do something on these items here. Also there. And then maybe some of that lighter green on the skin tone here. I might even try to simulate some, some scales or something there too. 
Uh, Thranuel, that's unfortunately there has been, well, there there might be days where things are not quite so bad, but uh, yesterday not a really good day. The day before there was a slight improvement and then it just kind of took a big, big turn backwards. And that's pretty much how everything's been going over the last, well, especially the last three weeks. And unfortunately, there won't be any improvement for weeks to come, I would imagine. So that's why that's why I'm just uh, sending out the word now that this kind of weird schedule change and sudden streams, which kind of, <laughs> that sounds wrong out of context right there. That sounds like somebody that had a little too much tea or something like that. All right, we've gotten some of our lights in there. Some of our lights over here. And then over here on the, oh, and the, the gemstone. Like that. What's happening with these guys here? Probably still going to have to come back in with the darker stuff on those. Yeah, we'll have to come back with our darks on those things. Oh, thanks, Ebzan. It's, yeah, I, every time I think I'm, uh, I was going to say right on the Patreon page, kind of what the situation is, then the situation changes. <laughs> then I think, okay, this is the situation, and then that uh, becomes a new situation. This situation requires some of that lighter green. So uh, see how that... that that can go from the darker green to the skin tone here. We'll do the same maybe on this side. Now, let's see if we can get some actual eyes in here. I don't know. What the heck? We got Prussian blue here. We'll use that for right now. Which way? We don't want to just looking straight ahead. Do we want to look off to the side? Not this way, but I think maybe this way. Let's see what happens here. And again, see how my hand is rock solid here? And look at this. Definitely closer to the back of the brush than to the front of the brush. Something like that. And then let's get this one over here. So uh, usually looking straight ahead, that just kind of, that's sort of a lifeless expression. So you want to have them look in one direction or another. Now let me see if I can get some lights in there. Oh, thanks, Absent. Now, uh, like we talk about, there's leverage, right? Because I'm way back here, not here. First of all, can't, <laughs> look at I'm about an inch and a half shy of the face, but that and all it is is one of those uh, gel-filled wrist things, right, that you use for when you're, when you're typing and stuff. And that steadies my elbows, right, because, well, if someone shakes the table, I guess uh, I guess that ain't going to work so well. But I could even do this, right? My hand is on the table now, and then this hand is resting on top of that hand. So I could just, I could be here all night. I could stay there all night long. And now, uh, Thranuel, I think uh, did, uh, I might have, did I send you a link? To, well, of course, it's Amazon here. It doesn't really mean anything for you out there. But it was a, a simple magnifier light. Now, this one is only a three times. I've got magnifier lights that go up to seven times magnification. I've been using magnifier lights for decades. And that has saved my eyes for sure. It has saved a ton of eye stress. But thanks, Ebzan. Appreciate that. Is that too light? Maybe not. I want to see if I can get some more of the... Uh, turquoise and green skin tones and a couple of other areas here 
if that's possible. Uh, oh, Steele's got the magnifier glasses. I know uh, a lot of folks use the magnifier glasses. I just, I love the magnifier lights because the light is in between the miniature and me. So there's no shadows or anything like that. So Dano, I hope that you're doing well. So Dano, sorry I didn't get a chance to give you a heads up. I just wasn't sure if I was going to be streaming at all. Uh, I started this at about, well, let's see, two hours ago. So at 2.49, I started this. <laughs> Thanks, Dano. Because I could use one of these right now. Because I have no cough drops here. Kathy has them all. Uh, thank you very much. So, Dano, uh, this is the thing that I, I think I sent you a picture of this. Or maybe I didn't. I think I sent you a picture of this, didn't I? So this is with the fluorescent purple. You know, the homemade fluorescent purple there. <clears throat> hey, oh, thanks. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, so I know some people use the magnifier glasses. Some, well, f again, for me, it's always going to be the magnifier light. Also, too, because I uh, can't have that and the headset. And just, uh, it's always, uh, it's always been the mag lights for me. But any kind of magnification, I mean, outside of reducing the eye stress, it's also going to... Well, if the if the miniature that you're painting is three times the size of what it actually is, just think of how much more detail you'll be able to get. Uh, quite a bit, right? Oh, hey, Disaster. Nice to see you again. Oh, thanks. This is uh, from Loot Studios. We started this two, hour, two hours and one minute ago. This was uh, just primer two hours ago. Now here is our Saturday stream. Uh, I think this is what five hours, five and a half hours. You can see how much bigger this thing is. That's from Lethal Shadows. This is from Loot Studios here. Uh, oh they're heavy with oh geez they have light batteries in them too. Holy smokes. Um uh, so Asgard, yep, I have there's at least two of them I think. I know there's I know there's one but there might be two of those. And there's obviously the uh, the Metals Workshop series where we're taking the, the um, powdered metal pigments and doing the same thing, right? So we take these, mix these with linseed oil and do the same deal with them. All right, yeah, I'm, I'm going to try and hit this with uh, some of my lighter go right down in here, trying to make that look a little on the shiny side here, right on the edge of the tail there. Let's see if I can't pop in a little something here on this chest. What do we got here? Uh, I'll just use this. I don't care, because I'll probably come into this and hit it with some rust. Yeah, I might just do that. Uh, Terra Rosa. Uh, maybe a little Terra Rosa and Asphaltum. That's kind of typical. <coughs> sorry about that. So again, sorry if the voice is a little bit on the dodgy side here. For sure, I would normally just grab myself a cough drop, but all of those are gone. Uh, and I know I did try Asgard, the first Metals Workshop, actually. I just mixed them with a variety of acrylic mediums, like, well, the Master Medium, I think, from Green Stuff World. And... I think I tried mixing them with pigment fixer too. And then I think I tried mixing them with just regular acrylic paints. But the, boy, the linseed oil was sensational because they basically became opaque. Like opaque fluorescents, I mean, and then the metals were fantastic too. They were just, wow. Actually, the, 
the metal powders, I think maybe because they're ground finer than the uh, floral powders or something, those are even more. I really do like those. All right. Uh, never did darken the upper lip. I got to do some more stuff here on the tiara slash crown, whatever that is. And of course, what well, we've got, uh, this was, our, I think, our latest, no, the stream before that, right, was our classic Sauron. This miniature is about 22 years old, something like that. We did the, the texture on him. And of course, what well, we love our freehand here. We've done a whole squad of these guys right there. And, oh, and then there's our Kieran. This is another very recent tutorial. This is a shortened version of this. I'll be going up on the YouTube channel probably in a few days. Uh, yeah, Asgard, there's uh, there's got to be, at least, I think I would say there's two videos that involve mixing the fluorescent paints like that. I know there's at least one, but there could be two of them. And I might, uh, oh no, there is, there's definitely two of them because of the marblers, that's right. Because that that's a new material. And, and of course, well, the oils are fantastic for things like freehand, right? This is another one. You can see the freehand part of it on the YouTube channel. And of course, well, we love our object source lighting. It's just, uh, well, and basing too. Really love doing the basing. And of course, we also paint in 2D also with the oil paints. Uh, so, Moe, I hope that everything's going well for you. Uh, what do we got here? This is not actually as light as I would like it to be. But we'll just do what we can with it here. Now, nah, I won't lighten that up anymore. Here, though, I think we could maybe stand for some other type of reflected light here. Maybe something that's got a little bit of the uh, turquoise in it. Uh, just, just a little bit, not not a bunch. Okay, a little bit of reflected light there. Now also two, oh gee whiz, that's right. I've got uh, I've got a couple of different things that I was thinking about using maybe for seaweed. Oh, and I have corals. Well, there's really nowhere to put them on here. But I do have some of that seaweed from, oh gosh, I have to find it wherever the heck it is, from well, Wicked Elf Miniatures. I've got that seaweed, the, uh, the vellum plant seaweed. I have to find that. Uh, which way do we want to do this? No, we'll still stick with this. And then we'll do some light over here. Okay, so now that starts to look a little bit more like a blade. Still have to come back in with our darks there as well. Uh, I guess I'll do some uh, some sort of gold out here on this. Let's just change that a little bit then, because whatever. Indian yellow, a touch of the brilliant yellow pale. Just about do that minus the piece of fuzz over here and over there. And we'll lighten this up over here. Oh, what the heck. I'll throw some of this onto the... Uh, Treasure chest. We're going to be hitting that with some rust color anyways, so that'll change it all. Which means I don't want to make that too light. Uh, so probably, uh, Moe probably won't do any water effects. What I'd like to see if I can make the those uh, vellum plants work 
And uh, again, those are from Wicked Elf. You see me use the vellum plants. Oh gosh. I think I can get this guy out of here without knocking too many things over. So see these uh, nifty vellum plants right here? So there's some seaweed, and I've never had a chance to try that yet. So I'm hoping... I'm hoping to give that a shot on this one, maybe. I think that's probably why I printed this one out, was because I actually wanted to try that. Uh, I just haven't had a chance to do that yet. Let's see if I can get some extra light on the uh, rocks here that are closer to our torso here. Not so much down there. Same up here. Oh yeah, that's just a whole bunch of dark right there. And all this done with regular artist oil paints. Start to finish, just some flat brush on primer, no acrylics or anything like that. No, uh, not like we're doing the oil washes or whatever. Just using the oils in a, well, I guess a semi-traditional way. Uh, Moe, I've, I've got some, I've been printing out a whole bunch of uh, some elves and some human ranger figures for Lord of the Rings. And I've also been printing out those Make It Epic basing bits. Well, I mean, these are also, these trees right here, those are from Make It Epic. I printed those out. And they're a lot like, uh, oh, wait a minute, here she, here she is. So our, our Galadriel, right, with those uh, 3D printed bits from Make It Epic. Uh, I did some reeds and some cattails, and I wanted to try and basically do sort of a, uh, not a swamp effect, but more of a, I don't know, like a pond or whatever, for uh, the, not rangers of Athelion, but, uh, no, yeah, rangers of Athelion. Oh, let's see, we, we did it on, on these guys too, remember uh, here? So uh, there's some more of those uh, plants on these Diwali elks over here. Those were really cool. Uh, Make It Epic also has sci-fi stuff. So if you need 40k basing bits also, Dano has those. So Dano, if you want to post your link into the chat, your uh, your cult 3D there with some of your sci-fi basing bits. Uh, and everybody can check out Dano's uh, fantastic sculpting. And Dano, I don't know if you posted the link to your Dreadnought yet, your Smurf Knot, but that was looking really fantastic, so you should probably post that in the chat too. Sorry I spaced on that. I, Again, uh, we're, we're basically doing a, a marathon here until about 7.30 or so, and that's, that's when Kathy would need her next uh, dose of medicine, so... And at, at the moment, that's just not something she can do herself. Ah, uh, here, that's more of our light. They're not too much down here. I can make that sword a little bit lighter there, okay. But this is also going to get some corrosion on it, too. I don't know. Uh, I think we can lighten these up a little bit more, can't we? Well, actually, Steela, were you going to be streaming? Well, gee whiz, you would already be starting to stream now. Uh, I wasn't sure uh, what days you might be streaming this way. I know that your schedule kind of is random, too. That sometimes you just you stream when you can. So, yeah, let the folks in the chat know when, when you might be streaming next. Yeah, Dano, the, and I, the, I know you were saying just how much time you saved. And it was, it wasn't just a little bit of time. It was a lot of time that you saved on those compared to if you had been doing those with the acrylics. So better yet, right? Better result, less time. Ah, well, still, I hope that all gets gets resolved. I know it's just like it's one more thing, 
the, that one more adventure you didn't need. Yeah, you could you could do without that adventure, couldn't you? So everybody, please check out the the fabulous Smurf knot that uh, Dano painted with the oils, and just take a look at how it was it was so easy for him to be get all those panel shadings and not have to uh, fool around forever with those. I'm I'm probably gonna come back into some of these with dark, just like we did up here too. Now some of these, well, yeah, we'll just come back in with some of our darks on these guys here. Potentially the Egyptian violet, actually, that going opposite. Yeah, Stila, I just uh. Because there was the Olympics, right? And the Olympics, that was that lasted months. That was all kinds of crazy right there. But the uh, brush brigands, yes. And Steeler, definitely be sure. I don't know if you uh, shouted yourself out there. You want to shout yourself out. Uh, again, Armored Wolf. Well, also, too, everybody should please give uh, Armored Wolf a look-see on Etsy. Because in addition to all the fabulous basing materials that you see all the time on the channel here, Armored Wolf also uh, has all those spectacular uh, handmade leather goods, the dice bags, the journal covers. So please go also check out Armored Wolf. But, uh, well, the, the brush brigands will always be there for Stila. The, the brush brigands never abandon their captain. All right, a couple of more of my lights there, and then I'm going to come back in, maybe with some darks into this, too. Here's some more. Some more. Like that. And I might even take the blending brush to some of that stuff. All right. We're talking about those darks. And again, not to, not from the same... I, I was thinking maybe perlene black, but instead... Instead, how's about the, the purple here? That's the, the Egyptian violet... And we'll be able to steady up some edges right here. Also, too, oil thinner than water, so you can actually get thinner lines. That's another reason why we don't need super-duper brushes or whatever, because you can quite literally make a thinner line with the oil paints. Water has sort of a natural tension point, which the oils do not have. They're not so tense. Not so tense. We'll continue to add our lights here, or our dark sort of, and that and it accentuates our lights. So the lights get a little bit lighter. Also, there's a bit of color contrast. Oh, you know what we haven't done yet? We haven't done this yet. Zoom. Phil Noir. Ah, uh, fair amount of shading. Fair amount of shading, but... You just, you totally miss out, even like, uh, see on their, uh, on the scales way more interest here right with the color because now we've got reds and greens and all other kinds of good stuff like that so i haven't put a little bit of that yellowish green right there on the uh, so-called gold And I might I might keep doing that. That's looking for some reflected light now. That that's going to be very important. You've got to get that reflected light in here. Now here on the hair, this was where we we put that the radi uh, sorry the little bit of that thalo green down in there, just like what we have on this shoulder, but also to make a a bit of a color separation from the hair, not not a value separation. 
Yeah, Blades were at least uh, at least sleeping through. I know, I know you were hoping that was going to happen a long time ago. Yeah, that was that was something you thought was you weren't going to have to be waiting weeks and weeks for. Uh, every every dog is different, I suppose. Every situation is different. Now here, we haven't really gotten the lighter. Uh, some of these, not all of them. Try, trying to catch a couple of lights there. That's, that's it, no more than that. The skin here on the, uh, yeah, see on the back of the hands there. Let's go back to our Terra Rosa mix here. Uh, let me see if I can get a little bit of light on these knuckles. We did it on the other hand, just somehow didn't do it on this hand. Might have been a raid or something like that when I was just about to do that. That happens sometimes. We do appreciate all the raids that we got. I think Speckus Bud was probably our most recent one. But we uh, say thanks to everybody that did raids tonight because that's always fun. <laughs> And I think tonight was extra crazy because this is such an unusual time for me to be streaming. So I think we had even more surprised folks in here. And of course, uh, three hours and 48 minutes ago, this had no paint on it. This whole entire thing here, three hours and 48 minutes. I'm not saying, I'm just saying. It, it's possible for you too. Might take a little practice. There's a just like 3D printing, a little bit of a learning curve, you would say. Well worth it though. And ultimately, of course, the oils are far more durable than acrylics. We've got uh, plenty of folks that have been using the oils now over the last two years or so that have been using them on their gaming miniatures or whatever. And they can, they've said, oh yeah, those things take a beating, and they're just fine. Again, taking a little bit of a blending brush to that. Where's my, there we go. There we go here. A little bit more of that uh, lighter sand color down there. Do I need to, might as well see if I can't. Do a little bit here on the, the tail. Phthalo green, a little bit of the white. Ooh, that's a little too much thinner. Don't want to have a pin line wash. That's not what we're looking for here. No pin line wash. We're just looking to catch a little bit of an edge there. Not so much on that side. There we are. Poof. And we'll continue here. I think I could use a little more light on these scales here. Uh, not too much. It's almost as much reflected light as it is any sort of highlight. Scales aren't necessarily metal, but they kind of, if they want to have that shiny look, we need to give those some kind of reflected light, which is what's going to happen down here. We did this on the other side, too. Get on those scales, trying to find that reflected light. light over here same down there and that's got that greenish color to it mostly because of the stone of anything else I mean there's it is sort of greenish anyway but the stone of that the rock there all right I think that just about does it for those hey quiz uh, it's funny quiz so it was uh just mentioning that this very bizarre stream time here could be good for you and Megan because it's uh, 7.41 in the morning there. Yeah, it. Uh, 
I was not expecting to be streaming right now, that's for sure. So, Quiz, I hope that you're doing well. We are on... Well, let's see. I think we've been up at least 20 hours now. <laughs> at least, maybe longer. Yeah, at, uh, f but basically four hours ago we started streaming, so yeah, two forty-two in the morning, thereabouts started streaming. Almost like the old days of uh, Facebook Live. Yeah, Quiz, uh, <laughs> it, it got interesting. Oh, thanks, thanks, Quiz. Um, speaking of which. Uh, Kathy has all of the cough drops, so my voice kind of went wonky a couple hours ago, and uh, basically there was just this. That's all it was. Uh, Kweeza. Actually, uh, oh, what am I thinking? Not, not entered that. See, unfortunately, the caffeine doesn't do anything. Uh, it, it's weird. It just really doesn't do anything. Uh, Sugar does, though. <laughs> I'll, I'll, sugar helps. Uh, mounds of sugar. That would work. Yes. A sudden infusion of sugar provided by... Oh, chocolate, maple syrup, um, Lucky Charms. Trying to think of things in the house that have sugar in them. Now, of course, uh, well, can't get to any kind of beverages, but which is why, which is why we want the uh, medicine cabinet in here, which could, in theory, closely resemble a mini fridge. Uh, it's not a mini fridge, it's a medicine cabinet. Now, all that's in there is medicine. That's all that's in there. Now, of course, I also uh, was thinking if I had a microwave in here, <laughs> It'd be a full service kitchen and streaming area. Full service kitchen, maybe maybe even I don't know, maybe it'll a little uh a hibachi in here. Right? So we could do some indoor barbecuing because you know that uh that works really well. That would be <laughs> that would be stupendous indoor barbecue. Boy, that would be tasty. That would be quite tasty. Actually, at this point, food of any kind would be super tasty. Because I'm trying to think. Yeah, well, now once it's 6.45 now. Pretty sure the last time we ate something was... Nine something o'clock, maybe. Whatever I found in the fridge. I think it was some cheese ends. Yeah. Go to your deli, ask for ends. It's all the stuff that, uh. And sometimes it's not just ends, sometimes it's actually just like slices of deli meat that people said, I want 10 pounds of this. And they said, okay, it'll be that much. And they say, oh, I don't want 10 pounds of that. And instead of throwing it away, they actually kind of bundle that up and they put it in the around the deli, and uh, it's available for a fraction of the price. You could even take some of those and chop them up and put them in salads. That's what I've done in the past. Now, I don't want to get this too light here. Is this uh? Now, we we still need some over here, but I sort of like that darker, almost grayish green right there. It makes that uh, that turn much more interesting of the of the skin there. And a uh, little more reflected light there. What's going on with these now? Nah, I'm gonna see if I can maybe throw a few little strands of our green into the hair. Seriously? Salo green into the hair. 
where I can. Uh, so Queez, oh, I, uh, I, I saw the, I was sent some pictures of uh, some of the, the wee ones there watching, watching some 40k going on, uh, trying to basically uh, make some new players out of that. And uh, well, I guess we now are. Uh, is there any potential game that's uh, scheduled for this weekend coming up? I know we're a long ways away from that. It's only Tuesday, but wasn't sure if you got yourself maybe a game scheduled at all. Uh, what the heck? What the heck? I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna throw a couple of the shots of green onto this right here. And then, oh, actually, the way this, I didn't really realize how they did structure this here. Let's, uh, to kind of, it's nice that they don't just have these fins coming out of just nowhere. Then a little more, again, of the turka has worked its way into there. Then also here. Something like that. Now, what about this? I want to see if I can't work some of the green into there, too. Now, I had thought about doing, I uh, was like uh, creating the impression of scales here or something like that, but then I thought, nah, uh, I'll just go with the, the nice soft uh, shading of green here. That should be good enough. All right, Blades, you have a good one. And I'll shoot you some messages during the day, too. So thanks so much for the gift subs. And, well, glad that I could actually say hello in uh, actual language, in person. And we'll also say hello to Lord Dave. How you doing? Nice to see you, Lord Dave. Oh, Lord Dave, did you see the... <laughs> this is a Ms. Balrog right here. So that's uh, Gandalf had quite the interaction with this thing. Look at how big it is. Ah, that's a... Uh, Fairly gargantuan. Ah, uh, Grosso, how you doing? Nice to see you again. Oh, and Dave, I'm not sure. Did you ever get to see these guys on the movement tray? I know you saw them being painted, but I don't think you saw them all magnetized on the movement tray. So, yep, yeah, those guys are all done. Uh, yeah, Quiz, uh... <laughs> If you check out some of the clips that uh, Bithron did of the interaction between Gandalf and that particular Ms. Balrog there, uh, it was revealing. It was very revealing. We learned some new things about Gandalf in, in some of those clips. Oh, no problem, Grosso. No problem. I hope that you're doing well. And uh, good morning. I always... Uh, I try to follow folks uh, as when I when I can on Instas, of course, so that I don't I don't miss all the cool things that people are posting. Uh, well, let let's just say that uh, he kind of said that he's like he was uh, like you know um, I know you don't have a whip there, but if you ever find one, could be into that. So yeah, that was because uh, uh, that particular Ms. Balrog did not have a whip, so. Gandalf, uh, he was the first one to suggest it for some reason. I don't know why. I don't know why. But we are going to hit a little bit more of a light on that ear and then maybe on the hair. Then the crazy little crown thing over here that also could use a few more lights. So that was... Uh, yeah, you, you, you never really know somebody until you know them. And we thought we knew Gandalf, but uh, I guess we didn't know Gandalf as well as we thought. What I do know is that I need to get a couple of more lights over here onto uh, this thing. And here. Not necessarily reflected light, but... And then uh, here too, the, again, this one, the support nubs, there, there is a lot of them. Because this is basically, it's a one-piece 
even the base. This entire thing is a one-piece print. So for the convenience of the one-piece print, you sort of pay a little bit of a price and some support knobs you're going to have to clean off. Oh, and Quiz, I hope that, uh, speaking of printing, yeah, I hope that you're looking forward to, uh, wow, you're, you're going to be able to print off some really big stuff there. That's, uh, that's going to be fantastic. Now, I'm guessing you're probably not going to use that for terrain, just to, well, I guess you could print out some vehicles. I mean, if I ever get the any cubic set up, I'll, I'll try and, uh, Oh, wait a minute, let me, uh, I didn't realize that Kathy is up here. Um, I don't know if Kathy needs some help with her medicine or not. Because I can uh, stop streaming here if you need some help with that. Do you need some help with your medicine? Because that's why I was still streaming, was so that I could help you with that. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> So I think actually I might be signing off soon here in uh, in a little bit, in about 10.50 max. It's going to be weird seeing who is out there for rating possibilities. Um, <laughs> brush for hire. That would be hilarious. So I think that's where I should head off to is brush for hire. So I think that is where we just might go. So yeah, Queez, uh, I think uh, you know you could print out some of those. Uh, I, I got some vehicle files that, that I could try and send you, and you could print those out. They would probably be much easier on your large printer than me trying to print them in tiny little pieces, right? Oh, thanks, the manual. Yeah, all of a sudden there was a there was a Kathy standing outside the room, and I went, wait a minute. But I just realized that I don't think she was supposed to take her medicine until 7.30, so. But it is possible, and uh, I guess, well, Thranuel, this, this time probably works out pretty well for you, because uh, I'm, I'm guessing this is as much of a live stream as you've been able to catch in a heck of a long time, right? I think so. Alright, we'll catch a couple of more lights on the ends of her fingers here. Now, yeah, Queez, and uh, also, too, it just it takes so long, right? It just, you're tying up one printer for days. Like some of those vehicles, they took days to print because, okay, there was a f there was a five hour, there was a six hour, there was the eight hour print that had to be done. And of course, uh, you're also you're you're at the limits of what the small printer can do. Now, Thranuel, I would just. Uh, Well, actually, the other thing, too, is that, uh, well, you know, Kathy would really rather be streaming and hanging out with her friends and doing all that kind of stuff. And if she could do that, I'm sure that would just, uh, well, you know, it would it would make a big difference just uh, in, in the frame of mind. So that's another kind of a nasty thing about this is that she can't do any of those things that she would ordinarily, ordinarily love to do. So yeah, I guess uh, that's why I got surprised because I figured I would see her in the chat. So all of a sudden I was like, there's somebody standing outside there. Unless there's somebody that just broke into the house. That, that's that got to be Kathy standing there. All right, I'm going to see if I can't. Chuck in a little bit of light right over here. Oh, that, that works. What's going on up there? I'm going to try and also solidify these areas because that's a little rough there still yet. Okay, that's a little better. That's a little bit better there. All 
Alright, so I think we've got that pretty well set. Yeah. 